I'm drinking Spanish coffee while I wait for my lunch and thinking about what I'm gonna say in this video. It's a video that suggests we've got experience and knowledge to share with others. But in truth, I've always avoided people who make such claims. We've traveled a lot ourselves in this country and it's certain to say we've got some things to say and things to share. We've been and experienced its castles, its coastlines and its beaches. We've also seen its wildlife, which is truly incredible, really. We've also been to its little places that are full of intrigue, like Islamic palaces at the Alhambra, the festivals in places like Valencia. We've registered the religious aspects of the nation and the Camino Trail and Santiago to, to Compostela and the secrets held within that area. And of course, Barcelona, which for us, well, more on Barcelona later. Madrid, of course, the capital. We had a fantastic time there. And again, we'll tell you a little bit more about Madrid when we get into the question and answers. And of course, the mountains. The Espuna Mountains in the south, but also in the north, around the Picos, all beautiful. Some of our little gems we've been to and we, re and we return to, places like where we are now, Villa Hayosa. And the whole coastline is great for wintering, where we spent a lot of time. But in truth, each person's circumstances are unique and the experience is only limited to the currency of that moment. We want to help, and so I'll push aside my dalliances with imposter syndrome and do our best. So here goes our answers to your questions from the beach in Spain. Should we crack on with these questions? Let's crack on, let's okay, go. Okay, number one, do we use a VPN? Now a VPN, um, if you don't know what it is, it's basically, it stands for Virtual Private Network and it's a, a secure channel, a little bit of software, goes on your laptop. When you dial into the internet, to use an old fashioned expression, it takes you to a specific dial up and it's more secure. It stops people tracking where you are, in a sense, if you're on a public Wi-Fi, it means they can't log into and, and look what you're doing through that network um, and so on and so forth. And it also means that if you're down into the, it helps you to, you can select where you dial in. So I can dial into the UK and still access BBC iPlayer and all those sorts of things that would be excluded to us if we were off site. Mm -hmm. Now, it does produce and give you a little bit of um, a protection. But this is a bit like security on cars. No one does uh, puts things security into cars expecting it'll be 100% safe. So you still need to be careful. Still need to make sure that you don't give your passports away. And uh, you, know, you know, particularly classically, if you respond to an email and give somebody the login details, then that's always gonna, nothing will stop them getting in if you do that. So a little bit of care and, and, and caution, but yeah, we do use a VPN. We use NordVPN, um, we bought it. We don't recommend or, or um, suggest products for money. Um, it's, it's, it's our own thing. There are other products available. Yes, as always. Yeah. Uh, next question, how do you go on for cash withdrawals? Okay, well, we use two cards. We use a Halifax Clarity card and we also use a Starling card. There are others, Monza, Revolut, are other popular ones. Um, for the latest information, check out Martin Lewis and the Money Saving Expert. Um, we'll put a link in below. Um, he gives the probably the most up-to-date advice for the best cards. Cash withdrawals is pretty much the same as in the UK. There are cash machines just about everywhere. Just one thing to note, um, just be cautious with some of the fees that some of the banks are charging. We tried BBVA yeah. uh, Bank, and that wanted to charge us six euros um, for getting some money out. So we canceled that one and we went to Sabadell and that was just one euro 80. And the only other thing that we do is we, we always try uh, to pay in euros. Um, it does say, do you want to pay in euros? Do you want to pay in sterling? We always choose to pay in euros. That's when you're paying by card. Yes, when you're paying by card for something, yeah. Um, and that's because your bank will set the exchange rate and not the, um, it's not the bank of the person that's making the transaction. In practice, what'll happen what I mean. is you'll, you'll swipe your card or you'll put your card in and uh, they will hand you back the terminal and on it will be an option for euros or sterling. Just mm. select this, the, uh, the euros, the euros option. option. Happy days. We always carry a bit of cash, don't we? Yeah, we do. But Should... not enough to make a thief happy. No. 
so we enough cash um, so we can tip and if we needed to pay for um, a sa uh, for an air in we so we've always made sure we've got a few euros in coins as well yeah one of the questions we had was interesting one how do we get on with the languages yes yeah we tend to find that if... if I'm laughing because English is my second language anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, it's fair to say I did brush up a little bit on my French and German when we started travelling again. However, this is what we've found. It's a personal opinion. When you're in France, we've found that they do really like you to try and at least ask for something in French. And when you get to Spain, it's a little bit different. It's a bit more of a, um, a business attitude really and they want to make the yeah, transaction. Let's get, as, let's get this done. Let's get yeah. it done as quickly as possible. Yeah. Um, on the sites that we've used throughout Europe, you've, the bigger the sites, you tend to find that more English is spoken. Um, some of the more rural areas, then that's not always the case, but we've always used um, Google Translate if we've had any, tr any issues. And if you do receive, uh, what we've, something we've found recently as well, is that if you receive a text, um, if, certainly if you've got an iPhone, if you press the, the button and it's, it will actually translate it for you. And so you've got that option as well. So yeah, I'll put a bit of footage on now to show you how to do that. It's quite useful, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. The, the other yeah. thing as well with the Google Translate now is you can actually switch the camera op option and, and put the camera over the text, and it transposes it for you or translates it for you, uh, just through your camera. It's, technology is coming on yeah. great. Yeah. The other thing for Spain as well to remember, and this is primarily about Spain, is that there are dialects which are mm. um, a little bit different. So you've got Spanish, Catalan, Castilian, yeah. Valencian, yeah. and it's not as clear cut as perhaps it is in France, although no. there is some uh, regional variances around the mountain areas in, in France. But So English works. English and, works, uh, yeah. It's quite interesting actually, because yeah. there's with a lot of Norwegians and Finns and Scandinavians here, and they all speak English to the Spanish to, you know, to uh, make themselves understood. So English is uh, absolutely bob on here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Next question is, what is van life photography? <laughs> if you follow it's definitely, on, if, definitely one for you to answer. If you follow us on other other, uh, other channels on Instagram, in particular on, on, on uh, Facebook or Behance or Vero and some of the things that we're on, you'll know that we've had a little bit of a side brand creator called van life photography. Um, what, sorry, van wolf photography. Wolf, because it's our favorite uh, natural wildlife animal. We, we uh, typically on a channel would take landscape, scenery, tourist type photos. Van Wolf takes perhaps uh, on the, on their chat that would take more sort of people photographs, more social commentary, and um, yeah, sort of street photography type things. Just what we deal with the cockapoo <laughs> who won't be uh, won't be left out. Won't be ignored. Yeah. So by all means, follow. We'd be we'd be grateful if you would. But I've just separated it off a little bit to give me a little more freedom to pursue an interest um, that might not be as as interesting for the mainstream viewers. But that's. You know, I'll let you decide on that one. You're perfectly welcome on all aspects of it. But so, it's typically, for example, I'll put a couple of photographs up Thank now, you. and you'll see what I mean. Okay, what is the warmest place uh, to go in winter in Spain? Definitely the Costa Blanca. That's what we found anyway. Yeah. Um, it has an average yearly temperature of 18 degrees, and it has over 3,000 hours of sunshine. So yeah, we found it to be um, yeah. the warmest place, sort of definitely from um, December, January, February, some of the other places that we've been to. Yeah, you've got to bear in mind, it is winter here. So like mm. we say, we're sat in jackets now, this, but the beauty of it is, is the sun still shines. Mm. So it's, it's the sunshine really for us that matters rather than the overall temperature. And your heating will kick on during the night because it does drop sometimes down to about eight degrees, mm. but then it's 25 degrees by the afternoon, yeah. which is really bizarre. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, the, the Costa Blanca certainly um, does have its moments though, weather-wise, and sometimes the beauty of having a motor home and camper van in particular is you can move around, uh, scoot across to Portugal if you need, uh, if the weather's better there, etc. So Chase the sunshine. Chase the sunshine. But overall, we found, and we've been coming since 2017, mm -hmm. that uh, the Costa Blanca area is uh, pound for pound Definitely the best, best option. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what route do we take to get down? Right. Most, most asked question. Everybody asks me that. Based on the fact that um, it's one of the main things, particularly if you've not been before, that people worry about the most, I think, yeah, is how do you, how do you how get, do you get to, to Spain? I've written a, a written blog um, about our route down, and in it I've embedded the considerations that we go through, because it's not the same from year to year. Weather's a big dependent. How long you've got to make the journey, mm -hmm. whether you want to take toll roads or not, whether there's anything you want to see on the way down. Um, I mean, if you're heading to Andorra for skiing, then obviously you're going to go and you're kitted out for bad weather or snow. You, you're going to go down the massive and over the mountains. But, but if you're not, the general advice is if the weather's bad, go west. Go west. And down yeah. the west coast, and yeah. it's not that far. 
it's not that difference really time wise and it's easier also as well in terms of fuel economy and that matters it's flatter so therefore you're not the vehicle's not pulling up hill as much mm. and so mm. you do save quite a bit on fuel but to give you some idea if you come down fast like we did we we took use the toll roads because we, we just took three days to get down here it was costing about 140 pounds in tolls to get from from getting off the boat at uh, getting off the train at uh, cali to getting off um, onto the campsite down here mm. Um, I, just, I checked recently, about 140 quid's worth in France and Spain. More in France, of course. Mm. Yeah. Uh, next question, can you get LPG? Oh, okay, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, never had any problems getting LPG. We use the lpg.eu EU. app. Yes. Uh, logo here, links below. Uh, very good. You can, it links up with Google, so you can look at a map, see the icon for, the, for where there's LPG, press mm. on it. Mm. It will tell you whether what price it is, whether they've got any what the last person that used it can put a comment on and then you can press another button and it accesses Google and sets your route mm -hmm. uh, straight to it so it's really good um, next one what are the supermarkets like very good um, we always little supermarket uh, motorhomes friend, friend yeah. but mainly for parking um, uh, here there uh, we tend to use the Mercadona there's Carrefour uh, Consum Dia they are all good supermarkets yeah. you will be able to get absolutely everything that you need if you like fresh fish then you're going to be in your element here because the choice is just unbelievable yeah. but everything you need all the staples you need really good choice um, some UK brands and good value and the cost of living is cheaper in Spain as well so it's uh, very well priced. And dog food's readily available. I know, I know most, I think it's about 80% yeah. of us are dog owners at some, aren't they, who, who, who travel yeah. in vans. Yeah. There's really no problem getting any, any of some, there's some UK recognisers, brands, mm -hmm. Royal Canning, etc. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of it. Um, I'll put a little bit of video here. I did cover it in the last uh, video. So, yeah, so there you go. Um, one thing, one tip that Helen always does about supermarkets, she always goes to Google Earth and checks there's not a barrier. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes there is, but yeah. not so much. Yeah. But it's just something we check, so it's wor worthwhile doing it. So, um, where's your favourite place in Spain? Oh. Uh, we get asked a lot. <clears throat> yeah. Very difficult. Yeah. I think we've divided it up <clears throat> into cities. Yeah. Uh, Valencia is our favourite Spanish city. Definitely. Um, yeah. Again, there's other vid videos yeah. about Valencia, so yeah. not, I can yeah. not wax lyrical about that. Yeah. Madrid, Madrid is good. an amazing city. Mm. 24 hours. We walked all night in Madrid. Uh, never felt. Uh, insecure at all no. completely opposite no. to Barcelona where you're always watching your wallet yeah um, mid, um, sort of Granada is amazing as well for mm. history mm. Uh, Leon in the north yes and Mathieu was one Mathieu, of our favorite yeah. places yeah um, lots of history yeah. good nice buildings yeah I mean it, opinions vary and it's what you want but if you notice Barcelona itself is not on that list we're not mm. particular fans of Barcelona uh, once you've been and done the, um, the sightseeing bits the, yeah. the uh, Sagrada, Sagrada Familia, Familia then uh, yeah, there's a bit of a thing. There, were, there was banners all over the place saying tourists out mm -hmm. and all sorts when we were there. Tourists go home. You got mixed up in, in, in a lot of the Catalan demonstrations as well when we were there last. So yeah, we're not planning on going back to Barcelona anytime soon. Nope. So that's the cities. Nope. Yeah. Now beach-wise, where we are now, Villa Hayosa is part of the uh, beach structure around the Costa Blanca. Oh, yeah. It's absolutely yeah. bob on, isn't it? Yeah. Foz in the north uh, yeah. and Beni Kassim, um, just up the coastline as well. Valencia it, it has got a wonderful beach. And all around that coast, really, or all around the Valencian community and through the Costa Blanca, Calpe, Denia, etc., etc., Alicante, and down south, south to Mazaron. Um, if you like uh, beaches and you like northern Spain, probably our favourite little secluded beach was, you better say this. <laughs> Praia de Mar de Fora, which was at Fistera, and we'll put a little, we've got yeah. some footage we'll of it. We'll put some footage on but, it, but that was right on, on, uh, the, on the far side. Beach. It was uh, just nobody there, it was just yeah. fantastic. Very and, quiet. And of course, in the north as well, it's a bit better because the dogs are a bit more popular on the beach, or allowed yeah. on the beaches a bit yeah. more, which is great. Yeah. For history, well, <laughs> Spanish history, like France and Britain, goes back to the Middle Ages and beyond. Well, mm. actually, it's BC, isn't it? Yes, yeah. Uh, and there's loads of options yeah. for history if you like your history. Yeah. Um, so on and so forth. You've got your Camino trails, your knights in armour. Knights Templars. Knights Templars. Yeah. Romans, Greeks, yeah. Carthaginians. Yeah. Phoenicians. Phoenicians. Greeks, you name it. Sea history, mm. pirates, corsairs. <laughs> yeah. you, could, you could really knock yourself out here. In fact, we do being history buffs. We, yes. we love it, don't we? Yeah. 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 So what's it like spending Christmas abroad? 
um, difference. It's, um, yeah, they Spanish, they really go for Christmas. It's um, same exactly, you would think, same Christmas decorations, Christmas trees, you name it. They are really gearing up for Christmas at the moment here, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, it is. I mean, most so, people go to the beach. So this will be our third Christmas in Spain. Yeah. And uh, it's great. We'll be heading to the beach and yeah. uh, where, wherever we are. Uh, we'll be in Portugal, actually. And just taking it, uh, taking mm. taking it in with everyone else. But mm. the key thing at Christmas to remember here is Christmas Eve is the, is a big night, mm. not so much Christmas Day, no. but then no. Three Kings Day on the sixth of, of January, January is a yeah. big day. That's yeah. probably our equivalent of Christmas Day. Really, yes. it's huge. So yeah. wherever you are, if you're over here on the sixth, yeah. it's a good idea to have something yeah. worked out where you're going to stay because they really go for the sixth. Yeah. That's in Spain. Out, check yeah. out where the local festivals are because there's generally big parades, festivals celebrating the arrival of the three kings, and that's yeah. when the children receive the presents. So yeah, big yeah. family festival days. Yeah. So we picked out a few of the, a few of the questions. There were some more. Um, so what I've done because obviously for, for the duration of the video, I didn't want to. We didn't want to bore anybody. So. <laughs> I've typed it all out and put it all on our website under a free, uh, frequently asked questions section. So everything we've just said, plus some other answers to some other questions are there. And I'll put the link in the description below and it's all on our website. So you'll find it there and hopefully um, that will work for you in future. If you've got any more questions, drop them in the line below. Um, we'll answer straight away. Mm -hmm. We always do. We, we try to answer everybody. Um, and um, you say follow us on Instagram and um, those links are below. I think that's about it. I think that's it. Martin out. Helen out.